Hi, Phil. Thank you for joining me here uh, today in the absence of me being able to get into the studio. Uh, would you mind maybe introducing yourself and a little bit about your practice today? Yeah, sure. Um, so, hi, my name is Phil Kears. I'm a visual artist living and working in Belfast. Um, I got my BA from Ulster University in fine art um, in 2018. And the, the following year, I was accepted to do the Artist in Residence program at the university, which finished then in June 2019. And that was a really great experience to um, be able to contribute to the course that I felt had given me so much at the time. Um, and then during that year in my residency um, in March 2019, I had a solo exhibition in Pollen Studios and Gallery um, entitled Cut It Out. Uh, which combined um, an installation in the gallery space along with a performance on the opening evening. And the, um, then the remnants of the performance was then available to be looked at and um, formed uh, another part of the installation um, in the space. Uh, then Kind of going back to June 2019, um, whenever I finished the residency, um, it was at that point that I was lucky enough to get a studio space um, in the Emerging Artist Hub in Flax Art Studios. Um, October 2019, I was awarded the Travel Award um, by the Arts Council of Northern Ireland to travel to Bangkok, Thailand and take part in a week-long performance art festival um, entitled Rebel Live Action Number no. 3 Eco Art. And that was a really great experience as well. I had never been to the Far East before. Um, it was really great for networking and kind of meeting international performance artists out there, performing in front of new audiences. Um, because really up to that point, I'd only ever performed uh, to an Irish audience. So um, it kind of forced me to think of my work outside of my um, usual context of Ireland. Okay, great. <clears throat> so Phil, um, what are you working through now? What are you working toward? Um, working towards, um, well, really, I'll, I'll talk kind of a, briefly, kind of a bit about my practice, I suppose. Okay. Um, uh, it centers around really um, sculpture, installation, and performance at the moment. Um, and I'm dealing with themes of sexuality, gender, emotion, and religion. And it's um, it's greatly inspired by relationships, um, both platonic and romantic, um, and also my relationship to Northern Ireland itself, um, and where I fit into society as a member of the LGBTQ plus uh, community here. Um, and it's kind of strange to think like. I did my um, <clears throat> my foundation in 2013 in Manchester, and I sometimes think about, you know, if I went on to do my BA there, the work would have been so much different, um, because yeah, I, I feel like I suppose the work that I make would would really be um, a drop in the ocean over there. I guess I'm I'm drawn to how there's there's still you know, so much to fight for, for equality here. And it's, um, my work's really uh, influenced by circumstance, you know, my, my age, my experience and my location. Um, one of my sculptural pieces, uh, him, him in mind, 
abbreviated to him, um, is a 324 centimeter tall um, sculpture made from um, white sheet plastic. And uh, it's accompanied by a sound piece of myself uh, humming a hymn, which was amazing grace. And there was kind of a, a, a load of conceptual ideas kind of swimming around with that piece. Um, I was drawn to homophones, the word initially, because the first part being homo, <laughs> which directly transit, transits as um, the same. Um, so homophone is the same sound, so you know, two words. Um, spelled differently, but sound the same. Um, and, you know, it, it being such a, a tall white object, um, I was kind of thinking about uh, the patriarchal system in society of um, straight white male being dominant and um, God is sometimes uh, stylized as capital H I M, and God is gendered as well. Um, and the the sound sound piece is really, you know, amazing grace. I would only really associate with deaths and marriages. Um, so what I was really trying to say there was a signify a death to the outdated kind of patriarchal system which I think society to be fair at the moment is kind of waking up to at the moment equality within marriage and um yeah again finding my place um living here in Northern Ireland so yeah sorry <laughs> my, my no no <laughs> it's, it's actually it's actually great to you know to hear you talk about the work itself because I remember seeing it uh, when it was on in that show. So so yeah, no, it's great getting that back now. Thanks very much. Uh, within my performance work, Peter, um, a couple of performances kind of stand out as um, I would say important within my work. Uh, I've always been drawn to trying to claim back words that I deem as derogatory or, or widely deemed as derogatory um, towards members of the LGBT plus community. Um, an early performance that I had um, made for BIFPA in 2017 was entitled Poof, where I had pre-made a hundred um origami pansies in the color of the uh, rainbow flag and uh, during the performance i i potted those pansies um in sand and rocks and placed them in front of myself to spell out the word poof um and all the while throughout the entire performance i had a um, an automatic air freshener that would would periodically go off, and um, with the with the scent, it would emit a, a poof noise. <laughs> so um, yeah, at, and at the end of the performance, I I kind of I wanted to just to, to sit in front of the word and just let the the noise happen as well, and kind of. Um, attempt to claim back the word, I guess, um, or take pride in it. Um, <laughs> another, another word or phrase that I was really interested in was um, how, how gay is used as a, a negative descriptive, I, I suppose, especially um, with the, the younger generation, I guess. Um, I definitely kind of heard it whenever I was growing up that people would you know, describe something that they didn't like as being gay. So um, 
in a performance down in Dublin for livestock, I decided to chop up um, phallic fruit and vegetables, which would, would have been uh, bananas, cucumbers, and um, aubergines. And I used then the slices to spell out the phrase gradually in front of me, that's so gay. And at the end of the performance, um, used the remnants and the skins and stuff to, to place a giant question mark on the statement. Um, because I was uh, thinking about, I guess, stereotypes, you know, um, here's, here's a performer with a, a pink hat on, um, working with a phallus object. I wanted you to kind of think that you knew everything about it and then burst the bubble at the end and just, you know, all it is is fruit and veg and I'm spelling white words <laughs> kind of thing. Um, okay. Yeah, but yeah, moving on to uh, what I am currently working on, my current body of work um, is really four or five uh, new sculpture or installation pieces that um, are visual representations of depression. And alongside those are the um, the ongoing project that I've been doing since uh, 2018, which is my notes to self placards, a couple being behind me at the moment. Um, so it was really me kind of trying to put out positivity with those placards and also um, instruction, I guess, for myself and for others. Um, but I think along with the, the sculpture and installation work that I've got in the works at the Met, um, the whole body of work is, it feels right with a kind of post COVID world at the moment, the timing feels right. Um, I'll also be turning 27 this year, which is kind of like an age that I have been thinking about because it's a, an age that a lot of um, well-known creatives in the past have um, crippled under their own um, mental health struggles. Um, so yeah, I, in a post-COVID world, I think it's obviously been really tough on everyone. So what I'm trying to do is, is make that visual, let it take up space and acknowledge it in some form of way so that we can all move past it eventually because we're probably moving from one crisis in one kind of health crisis into another going forward you know into a mental health crisis after all this yeah so in the meantime before i can get into your studio is there somewhere i can follow what you're doing online yeah of course um so I have a, a website up at the moment, um, which is just www.philkears.com. And I am over on Instagram as well, um, just at Phil Kears. Okay, cool. Well, Phil, thanks very much for the insight into the practice. And I'm really looking forward to actually getting into the studio and getting a better sense, you know, in person of what you're doing. No worries, Peter. Thanks very much.